Hello, it's Heather, back to talk about more respiratory therapy school stuff. I am currently only taking one class. It's summertime. I'm finishing up an ethics class that I'm going to need before I graduate, but it's not part of my actual respiratory therapy program. So anyway, um, since I'm not actually doing anything respiratory therapy related, I thought I would talk a little bit about school in general and the differences between choosing a bachelor's degree program and an associate's degree program and the benefits and and uh, negatives associated with those. So I've got some stuff written down here. If I look down, that's what I'm looking at. So the biggest question on most people's mind is cost. How much is respiratory therapy school going to cost? Um, there is a big difference between going to a, a four-year bachelor's program and going to a community college program. I can only tell you what my program looks like in my state. I haven't really looked at others, so I could be wrong. It may not be as big of a difference in other places, but um, in my state there are a few different uh, community college programs that are available, and there are two universities that offer bachelor's programs. Neither of the universities that offer bachelor's programs are anywhere close to where I live. I did not really seriously consider trying to go to them, mainly for that reason. Um, but also, cost was a big factor. So, my school, the entire program, once I have finished my prerequisites, now keep in mind this cost does not include doing any of the prerequisites, but the program itself costs around $15,000. Um, that does not include everything. So you still have to buy your scrubs, your stethoscope, um, your get all of your uh, medical testing done, physicals, immunizations, all of those sorts of things are not included in that figure. It does include books, it does include tuition, and it does include some of the fees that they already know um, that are associated specifically that would be paid to the school and that are associated with the program. So about 15,000 and that is for the entire program. Now, um, there are about three semesters worth of prerequisites that you have to take, but it's not three full semesters. It's just three semesters because of how the classes have to be taken um, sequentially. So you're not gonna be taking three three semesters where you're taking 12 credits each semester. But right now in my state, uh, community college costs about $160 per credit hour. So you can look and see what your program would require as far as prerequisites and then see what they say the program costs and get a good idea about that. Um, to give a little bit of perspective on that, one of the universities in my state that does offer a bachelor's program in respiratory therapy estimates that tuition alone costs $16,000 per semester. So you're looking at over $30,000 per year to attend that university. It is a private university. It's not a state school. There is no state school in my state that has a respiratory therapy program. So that wouldn't be an option, even if you wanted to. Um, so you know, you're looking at paying $16,000 for one semester for a bachelor's program, and that's what my entire program costs at my community college. For me, that was a big deal because I am not using any sort of um, financial aid for my program. I am paying cash out of my own pocket for it. Being uh, the age that I am in my financial situation, that is the only thing that I really could do. I am going to a try. I'm going to try applying for some financial aid next semester um, when certain things in my life have changed and allowed me to do that. But as of right now, I'm just planning on paying for the whole thing cash out of pocket. So cost was a really big deal for me. Um, there is another option as far as attending a for-profit university. There are some for-profit universities that are in person and or online. There aren't any for-profit universities in person in my area that I know of. There is one online for-profit university that is that was nationwide, but it lost its accreditation and I believe is not currently accepting students anymore. That is a big thing that you want to look at if you're looking at any program. You want to make sure that it is an accredited program, which means that it is 
um, accredited by COARC, the Commission on Accreditation for Respiratory Care. Yes, I had to read that off my thing, what the acronym stood for. So if your program is not accredited, then you may run into issues being able to take board exams, being able to get licensed. Um, so you absolutely want to make sure that you attend a program that is accredited. Uh, you don't, I personally, some other people may feel differently, but I personally would not even attend a program that says that you know they've applied and that they will be accredited by the time you graduate because you have no guarantee that they're going to follow through with that and that's actually going to happen. So community college in my opinion is a really good option for someone like me who is very conscious of cost. Um, the um, for-profit universities you can get school through school fairly quickly uh, similar to how you might be able to do it in a community college program after your prerequisites. Uh, but the for-profit universities, typically you don't have to have a lot of prerequisites in order to start. So like for instance, the one that is no longer accepting students, um, it was like a 26 month program. They are s scheduled very differently. Their classes do not coincide with, um, classes at other universities. So if something happens to your program, like just last year, I think it was, there was a program that was in many states across uh, the United States and they closed down very suddenly. Uh, many students were, were just out of their program without warning. And um, unfortunately, a lot of times they found that credits that they had taken did not transfer to any other type of program. So they were just kind of out that money and out that time that they had spent. And I would hate for anyone to have to go through that. So many programs require that you take a minimum percentage of your classes with their program. So that's definitely something that if you think that there might be a possibility of having to transfer at some point, if you think that you might be moving or something like that, you really need to look into whether or not um, your credits will transfer, whether or not you would be able to finish at a different program, just something to think about. Um, as far as what classes you take and the prerequisites, the classes that you take in any respiratory therapy program, the information that you learn is going to be basically the same across the board because you have to take board exams at the end. So they really have to fulfill a certain amount of information. You have to learn certain things in order to pass your board exams. That's, that's the reason for going to school is to take board exams so that you can then practice. Uh, if you don't pass your board exams, a degree does nothing for you whatsoever. So the information that you're going to learn is going to be pretty consistent uh, in general ways. So you're going to take pharmacology, you're going to take mechanical ventilation, you're going to take all those things no matter what program you go to. The difference might lay a little bit in your prerequisites. For instance, in some programs you may have to take microbiology as a prerequisite and others you may not. You may have to take physics as a prerequisite and others you may not. That's one difference that I have seen as far as doing in research that I've done between bachelor's programs and associate's programs. Bachelor's programs, the respiratory side of things, when you're actually taking respiratory therapy classes, you do that for about the same length of time as you do in a community college class. The difference is um, in how many prerequisites you have to take before you start taking those respiratory therapy classes and which, which prerequisites th those are. There are typically fewer prerequisites, takes less time than um, at an associate's program than at a bachelor's program. For example, um, I say that I had to take three semesters worth of prerequisites before I could apply to my program, and that's true. But it was only something like four classes that I absolutely had to have finished before I could apply. There are a few others like the ethics class that I'm taking right now that I have to take before I graduate, but they weren't required for me to apply to the program. I just am doing it now to get it out of the way. So I'm not taking any extra classes on top of my respiratory therapy classes. But when you look at amount of time, if you look at, you know, if you have to take three classes sequentially so you're taking three semesters here and then my particular program is five months or five months it's five semesters so you're still looking at an eight semester long um, time that you're spending in school um, 
So between community college and a bachelor's program, there's not a whole lot of difference in how long it's going to take you to finish. The main differences are going to be cost and that you're going to end one program with a bachelor's degree and one with an associate's degree. So what benefit is there to getting the bachelor's degree? It's much more expensive, so why would you want to do it? It depends on the person. Um, a bachelor's degree can allow you to have more ability to um, move up once you're done. So once you're practicing and once it, it may give you more mobility in what jobs you can take, uh, whether you might be able to go on to do a master's degree, whether you want to do teaching, things like that. There are certain things that you would have to have a bachelor's degree for. You do not necessarily have to have a bachelor's degree in respiratory therapy to do some of those things. There are many people who get an associate's in respiratory and go on to get a bachelor's of health science, not necessarily a bachelor's of respiratory, and that still enables them to have some of that job mobility and movement that they're looking for. For someone my age, I don't know that it's worth it to me to do a bachelor's degree. Now, what I have considered is once I am working, there are certain hospitals that can do tuition reimbursement or that will help you pay for school or will outright pay for you to get a bachelor's degree. So if I end up at a job that has certain benefits that might allow me to continue doing an online bachelor's degree, I may do that. So my program has agreements with a few different universities in the state uh, where you can continue, they will accept all of the credits that there's an agreement, they accept all of the credits that I will have finished uh, by the time I do my associates with my community college, all of those credits will transfer to that university without question, and I will be able to continue at that university to get a bachelor's degree in health science. So that is something that I have considered doing. It just kind of depends on where I find myself. Um, because again, for me, being an older student, I have fewer years to work to make up any difference that it would take to pay for school. So if I can find a program that would help pay me, help pay for a bachelor's degree for me, it may be worth it to me. If I have to pay for it all myself, it may not. Just one of those things that you need to weigh and decide. There is a difference in pay depending on where you live, what hospital you work at, what state you live in you aren't necessarily going to be paid more because you have a bachelor's degree working as a respiratory therapist. Some places you do, some places you don't. There's a bigger difference between being a CRT and an RRT to my understanding as far as pay scale, but pretty much these days you don't want to just be a CRT. You want to go for that RRT because almost nowhere is going to be hiring brand new CRTs. Everyone wants the RRT. There are people who are CRTs who have been grandfathered in, they've been working, they have the knowledge, and that's perfectly fine. But there are certain states where you can't work as a CRT. This is my understanding. Please correct me in the comments if I'm saying something that's incorrect, but the research that I've done has shown me that there are some states where you have to be an RRT now, and there are they expect that that's kind of the way things are going. Um, in order to be a CRT versus RRT, what's the difference? So when you finish school, you've graduated and you are allowed to take your board exams. The first board exam you take is the TMC, the therapist multiple choice. If you pass that at a certain level, you have your CRT. If you pass it at the high cut level, it allows you to take the CSE, the clinical simulation exam. And if you pass then the CSE, then you get your RRT. So that's my end goal is to take my boards, take the TMC, pass it at the high cut, be able to take the CSE and pass it and have my RRT. That, that is the goal. If I go on to do a bachelor's degree after that, that's a completely different story for me. My, my main goal at this point is to get my RRT and to be able to start working. Um, the one thing that you need to keep in mind, there are certain programs that allow you to do online school. Uh, for instance, my program does have an online option. It's an online option where it's not completely online. You still have to be on campus once, one day a week to do labs and you still have to do clinicals. So my understanding is that some of the online programs that are online only, like the for-profit universities that have an online only option, um, it can be a little bit trickier to arrange clinicals because you still have to go to a hospital and, and 
work in that setting to do your clinicals, to learn the things that you need to learn in order to be a res working respiratory therapist. And it's my understanding that it can be a little bit harder to get clinicals arranged. Uh, you may have to do some of the research yourself and, and contact people on your own. Whereas a program like mine, they set that all up for you. Even the online portion that my school offers, they they do the work for you in helping you to get those clinical positions and, and working with those hospitals and all of that. So that's another thing you may want to look into if you're looking at doing a for-profit university that's online only. You want to make certain that you are going to be able to be able to do your clinicals and that you have the information you need to get that set up if you need to. So those are kind of the basics of the difference between a bachelor's and associates. I am going for, and actually it's an associates of applied science. There is a difference there too between associates of science and associates of applied science. Um, from what I've seen, a school in my state, oh, I forgot there is actually one state university that has a respiratory therapy program, I believe. I'm going to have to look it up again. I could be wrong, but, um, but there was a difference in what they accept if you have, as far as credits, if you're trying to continue on with a bachelor's degree and you already have an associate's. There was a difference in what you have to take if you have an associate's of science versus an associate's of applied science. But I haven't looked th into that too much because I'm, I'm taking what's offered in my area, which is an associate's of applied science. Um, so I think that's pretty much it. You want to look at tuition. You want to make sure the program is accredited. You want to make the determination is the cost of the tuition and the benefit that you're going to get from that um, a good enough trade-off for you to pay higher tuition to get a bachelor's degree or to do your program in a shorter amount of time through a for-profit university. And you want to make sure if you do a for-profit university especially that the accreditation is in line, that the school itself, you, you don't read, Google it, you know, see if there's anything in the news that you can find about that school being in any sort of difficulties or trouble because you don't want to find yourself partway through and your program shuts down. Um, I feel like doing a, a community college or a university, you're probably less likely to get into trouble as far as it's shutting down partway through. Um, just my own experience, I've seen several for-profit universities close in my lifetime that have been around for decades and decades and decades and, and students are completely caught unaware. So just be careful of that. So if you have any other information to add to this about getting a bachelor's, getting an associate's, if you have any other questions that you think I might be able to answer, go ahead and leave them in the comments and I will see you guys next time.